welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. I am coming at you with another Halloween kind of styled video. So you probably already know by the title of this video, but today I'm attempting to make a loaf of bread shaped like a spider. If you haven't seen them already and you're interested in the other videos I've made for Halloween, then you can check out the playlist linked down below. I've attempted to do a lot of really fun things on my channel for the month of October, and I think I have one more video planned and then... Christmas? So anyway, on to the spider business. I had the idea to do this video because I think a couple days ago, weeks, months, uh, time doesn't exist during the pandemic. I don't know when it was or when the video was created, but Andrew Lau posted a video at some point in the recent time trying to make a frog-shaped loaf of bread. And I was just really inspired, so I went to Pinterest as I do, and now here we are attempting to make a loaf of bread shaped like a spider. So of course this isn't my own recipe or tutorial, so I will link all the appropriate credits to the person who originally did this down below. To make our spider, or at least what I hope will turn out to be a spider, we need yeast, water, sugar, olive oil, salt, basil, a bunch of different spices. I'm gonna add in my own spices because fuck it. It calls for cheese, I'm not gonna put cheese in it, that's weird. Some strong bread flour. Love a good strong, muscly, empowered flour. And then an egg for an egg wash before you cook it. I'm probably gonna mix that as well and just put like oil on top. And then I also brought some googly eyes with me so I can put some eyeballs on this thing. So I'm already off to a rough start because this recipe is in metric system and clearly the United States does not follow those guidelines for some stupid reason. I just kind of brought a bag of flour with me and I don't exactly know how much I need. Hey Google. Hey Google. Well, I was gonna try and be cool. Hi, and... how can I help? Hey Google. How many cups are in 750 grams of flour? Six cups. On the website convert to- That seems like a lot. I for sure don't have six cups of flour, so this should be fun. Okay, so clearly I did not plan ahead for this, so we're gonna be making a baby spider and cutting this recipe in half because I'm an idiot. And another reason why I'm already off to a rough start is because I am not in my own house. I am at my sister's house. So one, I don't know where a lot of stuff is. Two, I did try and bring mostly my own stuff because I was preparing knowing that I wouldn't be able to find flour in this house. But then also, I didn't think about the fact that I needed sugar for this recipe and I'm currently in a home that doesn't believe in carbs. 90% of the time, my sister and her husband are following the ketogenic diet for some reason. Love you guys, I'm just kidding. Yeah, so I brought my own flour because I knew there was no way I was gonna find flour in this house but I didn't think about the fact that I probably wouldn't find real sugar either. And if you're not big on baking, then you may not know that you need sugar in the recipe to feed the yeast to help your bread rise, and it's a whole process. So the sugar is very important to this recipe. So I looked all over to see if they had any type of real sugar that wasn't an artificial sweetener. And the only thing I could find was some brown sugar, which is essentially just sugar with molasses, I think. So hopefully this should do the trick and not make the bread too weird. Struggles of trying to bake in a house that doesn't believe in carbs and pretty much every baking item ever requires a lot of carbs. Seriously though, no hate to the keto community, kind of. I love my sister, I love my family. I'm not hating on anyone, it's just not my thing. All right, let's get started. Instructions start with place the yeast, warm water, and white sugar into a bowl and mix together, set to one side for five minutes. I also need to remember that I'm cutting this recipe in half because I have a feeling at some point I'm gonna forget that I'm doing that and add too much of one ingredient. So, we got our water, we got our white sugar, and we got our yeast. All right, so we're gonna let this baby rest for a couple minutes. Typically, when you're baking and working with yeast, once you let it sit, it should kind of like bubble up and get foamy. And that's how you know that it's been activated and it's working and is ready to be incorporated into the rest of your mixture. Again, we're using brown sugar, so I'm just gonna let the yeast chill, see if it's hungry, see if it likes our brown sugar. And yeah, then we'll go from there. I don't have any other video ideas for this week, so no matter what, we're making a spider bread. <laughs> All right, so it's been about five minutes and our little yeast baby is doing quite well. Yeast baby? She has gotten pretty foamy, she looks good to go. 
I have more faith in this project than I did five minutes ago, so let's mix in the other ingredients and see what happens. I'm not good with angles, as you can tell, so I apologize if this is totally weird. So next we have our oil. Original recipe is a tablespoon of salt, so we're gonna do about half a tablespoon. And for the other herbs, I'm gonna kinda just do whatever. It doesn't matter too much. Actually, no, that's a lie, it does, because I think you put in too many herbs, especially before the bread rises, it could have major effects on your final outcome. Garlic, a little oregano, I don't know what that accent was, a little onion, some rosemary and thyme because those are the best herbs in the world. Fight me, I know I'm right. Actually, no, I shouldn't say that because when it comes to food, I'm quite uncultured, so there's probably a lot of other really great herbs and spices I just haven't tried yet simply because I'm me and eat mostly pizza and pasta and bread. Okay, directions also say to add in 375 grams of the flour, which is half of the original 750 grams, which translates to six cups, but we're doing half, so it's three, and then half of that would be a cup and a half. I'm in grad school, I'm not an idiot. I'm an idiot. In goes our very precise measurement of a cup and our even more precise measurement of half a cup. So it says mix this together and then slowly start adding in the other cup and a half of flour. All right, looks decent enough. Let's add in the rest of the flour. Okay, I think we're at the point where I can start kneading this and work with gluten and stuff. <laughs> Uh, to make sure we get a better rise on our little spider baby. Cue uh, a time lapse of me attempting to knead. Not very well. Michelle, I will be cleaning your counter thoroughly. Don't worry. All right, well, that was an entire process. I probably added at least like a whole other cup of flour to the dough, so hopefully that doesn't change much, but it was just so sticky. like. I had to. So I have put the dough back into a greased bowl. I put it in the oven to let it rise for an hour. So we're just gonna let that sit and do its thing. And then when it's ready, I will come back and attempt to assemble something that resembles a spider. should be doing. Okay, so it has been an hour. I'm gonna take the dough out of the oven right now. I have not looked at it. Hopefully it has risen. I'm nervous. Oh, okay. She's definitely gotten bigger. She's a little pudgier. Honestly guys, we were set up for some real failure at the beginning of this video. And so far, it's going kind of great. Obviously, there's still a lot more room for things to go wrong because we're kind of just getting started, but I'm excited for where we are. Flash forward to like an hour from now and everything is just not okay. So next step, preheat oven to 350. Dunzo. Next, we cut the bread in half and then one of the halves in half. Oh, and I'm gonna need a baking sheet, I guess. Just gonna wipe off the pizza crumbs from last night. Welcome back to my weird angle. So divide the dough in half, you know, accurately and stuff. And then take another half and divide that into half. So then it says, roll the largest and one of the smaller dough balls into a ball and then place on a baking sheet. So this is for the body and the head. You know, originally the video I wanted to do today that I was really looking forward to was taste testing a bunch of different pumpkin beers because I love beer and I love pumpkin. And then I had the unfortunate realization that I had no one to do that video with because I refused to do it by myself because I'd end up either wasting a lot of beer or drinking a lot of beer, both of which are not good outcomes. So then came the idea to do this video instead. However, while I'm staying here cat sitting, I did bring some pumpkin beer with me. Maybe I should have one. Cheers. I know I'm getting so sidetracked, but since this might turn into tipsy spider bread making, I figured I'd tell you about the beer. Brand brewery, whatever it's called, Sycamore, is their pumpkin latte blonde. It's a blonde ale with coffee and spices. You can't judge me for drinking at 12.45 on a Friday because it's almost like I'm just drinking a pumpkin spice coffee. Okay, back to our spider. So 
I think I have the head. This is what we're working with right now. It looks a little snowman-y, but I promise it's... Actually, no, I don't promise anything. <laughs> I'll leave a small gap for the legs to fit in between. Divide the last dough ball into four pieces and roll into long, thin sausage shapes. This is bringing it back to the Play-Doh days, you know what I'm saying? Or wait, I hated Play-Doh. Did anyone else ever use Model Magic? Because that stuff was insane. I know the kids these days are all about their slime or whatever, but back in the late 90s, early 2000s, we had Play-Doh and, in some cases, Model Magic. So I did my makeup today with the Hocus Pocus palette again. Can you tell? Man, you know what I wish? I just remembered that for my mom's like birthday or Christmas, last year I got her a bunch of food coloring colors and I'm pretty sure there was a black in there. How amazing would it be if I made a loaf of black bread and on top of that, it was a spider. Damn it. Now it is telling me to place the four leg strips centrally between the head and the body, point four up either side of the head and point the remaining four down. This, is look, this looks like a tick. This doesn't look like a spider. I really hope the back end just like fluffs up. <laughs> I want it just really nice fluffy spider ass. I'm not even halfway through this beer yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't listen to anything I'm saying. Does he look spidery enough for the spider club? But am I not turtly enough for the turtle club? So the last step before going into the oven is just to do a little egg wash. Like I said, I'm not going to do that. I feel like there's so many other ways to brown bread. So I'm just going to use a little bit of olive oil spray and hope that does the trick. Mr. Spider is now in the oven. We're going to wish him lots of luck. You have a big journey ahead of you. I know you can do it. Please don't fail me. And yeah, that's all. Become bread. I love you. Don't take anything I said personally. You're the best no matter what. I guess I'm just gonna keep checking on it periodically to see if it is cooking or just kind of explodes or hopefully it doesn't explode because I've already flooded my sister's apartment once. I don't need any other bad things to happen. So, so I'm just going to continue drinking my delicious pumpkin blonde latte beer and not do work while having a beer because that's unprofessional. So I just took a little sneak peek and let's just say that sometimes dreams really do come true. All right, so it's been about 30 minutes, I think. She is ready. Are you excited to see her? I don't expect you to be. In fact, there's probably not many people still watching the video. Look! What I was talking about before my last clip was how bodacious she got. Look at that but, like, total compliment. I'm not trying to hate on the spider for having a big booty. Good for her. But honestly, I am so impressed with how this turned out. Not to, like, blow smoke up my own ass, but I do normally consider myself to be a rather competent baker. I enjoy baking. I have made a lot of bread in my days because I love bread. But just given the things that we were faced with between the flour and the sugar and everything else, I really thought that, like, the legs were going to spread out. She was going to flatten. It wasn't gonna look anything like a spider, but alas, she has proved us wrong. So of course, I just brought it out of the oven. She is still very hot. So I'm gonna let this cool off a little bit and then I will figure out a way to attach some eyeballs. Then I guess we'll have to do a little taste test. Oh my God, it's like after three o'clock. I think I've been doing this since 10.30, 11. Anyway, our lovely little spider is all cooled off and ready for decorating. In the Pinterest version, the person actually like cut a hole in the top to make like a bread dip bowl and put in whatever, you know, you could put like a spinach and artichoke dip or cheese or whatever other things people use for dipping. But I don't think I want to do that. I don't want to ruin this beauty. And since I cut the recipe in half, the spider is also just kind of small. And also I'm by myself and have no one to share dip with. So literally all I'm going to do is stick some eyeballs on her and then have a little taste test. So as you can see, I have all these eyeballs of all different shapes and sizes. And I guess I'll use the bigger ones. I feel like that'd make the most sense. Though, do spiders have multiple eyes? Or am I making that up? Let me know. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, for the sake of easy attachment, I'm only gonna use two eyes. Oh my gosh, look how cute. So as you can see, maybe you can, maybe you can't, 
I attached some eyeballs with cream cheese because that's all I really had. And then I tried to like carve out a little smile for a mouth, but I don't know. It's not picking up on camera or in person. <laughs> so this is the final product. This is my spider bread. I will insert a picture of what the original Pinterest one looked like. You can let me know down in the comments how I did. <laughs> no, but seriously, overall, this didn't turn out awful. Um, oh wait, I haven't tasted it. Duh. I feel so bad tearing her apart already, but I can't eat bread and not eat it immediately. I guess I'll just tear off a leg like it's a breadstick. Oh, that sounds so cruel, tearing off a leg. This looks like a piece of a really crappy pretzel, but uh... Ooh, it smells good. Not bad. Is it the best bread I've ever made? No. Does it have a good taste to it? Yeah. Yeah, this is like the perfect bread to just, if you're eating pasta with a lot of marinara sauce and you need to clean up the rest of your bowl and use some bread for the marinara sauce, this would be really good. So I've noticed in editing my recent videos, in any videos that I'm like eating something in, I do a little dance and now like, I just did it a second ago and now I'm like self-conscious about it. And I don't know why when I'm eating stuff that's good and I'm talking to people or a camera, I do a little dance. I'm weird, I'm sorry. I also have no idea how I'm gonna bring this home. I have nothing to put this in. I could like wrap it up in tin foil, I guess, but it'd still be really weird to carry. Maybe I cut it in half and leave half here for my sister and her husband when they get home and then there's just like half of a decapitated spider body <laughs> sitting on their counter. Maybe I'll do that. It will be my party gift to them and a uh, welcome back home. Here is a half a loaf of bread that's shaped like a spider. Okay, so I decided this is what's happening. I took the head and legs off. <laughs> Separate it from the butt. I'm gonna wrap this up and put it in the fridge for my sister and brother-in-law to have and find and I'm gonna take the butt home. <laughs> what a sentence. So I'll just send them a little bit of a warning text so they're not completely caught off guard, but I'm not gonna tell them what it is. So I filmed a video in your kitchen. I made a very lovely creation, but unfortunately cannot transport it all home with me. So you can expect a fun little surprise in your fridge when you come home tomorrow. Don't ask questions, don't worry about it, and yes, I cleaned up all of my messes. Set. All right guys, so that is it for today's video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for going on this roller coaster of uh, baking creation spider making session with me. Like I said before, I do have one more Halloween themed video coming onto my channel next week, so keep an eye out for that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or something. Subscribe if you want, I don't really care, whatever. I will see you next week. And